morning guys so i have my indoor plant this hoya uh, crimson queen i got this plant from steve's lees probably two to three years ago and i have never repotted it so she is in desperate need to be repotted it's in its original pot it's just kind of like a cachet pot inside the other pot but we are going to do this together um uh -oh. I have my Aeroid house mix that I use for inside my house plants. Um, so it is a combination of orchid mix, some perlite. Um, there is chunks of charcoal in here. And yeah, I think there's some peat moss, little chunks of peat moss. And what I'm going to, this is kind of broken down a little bit already. But I'm going to add a little bit of compost and mix it in with this orchid aeroid mix. And that's what I'm going to use to uh, repot my Hoya. And my compost, my aeroid mix. I'm just going to add a little bit into my... Mix it up a little bit. I mean, you could just go to the store and just buy orchid mix and just use that. Um, especially, I would recommend using that if you're a heavy, heavy uh, waterer. I'm not. <laughs> I'm kind of light-handed when it comes to watering. And on top of that, we have a pretty humid, I live in Texas, so it's, it's humid here, even inside the house. So I'm not going to add too much of the compost. I don't want the soil to be too heavy. I still want it light and airy, but I want to give it a little bit of moisture retention still. So that looks, that looks good. It's still chunky. It still has some chunkiness to it, but it still is a little, has a little bit of denseness too. Okay. And let's see what she's looking like. I'm a little bit nervous. Um, let's take off this layer of moss that I have. And hopefully I don't break anything. So since this Hoya is in a cachet pot and it's original nursery pot, it's in its original nursery pot, which is inside of a pot. I used a bunch of filler underneath it to keep the moss at the top and so it wouldn't sink down because the nursery pot is a lot, lot smaller than this cachet pot. So I stuffed it, apparently I stuffed it with uh, some type of stuffing, literally stuffing. All right, let's take this out and see what she looks like. Oh, that pot's not too small. I thought it was a lot smaller than that, but it's not. Her roots are starting to come out of the bottom. She has some, I don't know if you can see that, but obviously she's super wet. My goodness, I'm making a mess. And put her in here. get the rest of this moss out because I do want to reuse this moss and then let me go throw this away and then drain and rinse this pot real quick okay so I drained the pot I this is a huge pot I'm gonna need a lot probably a lot more soil than this which is fine because I have it so I'm just gonna add a layer to the bottom. Then, oops, I'm gonna try to work this out of its original pot. And if I had any kind of pest or issues going on with this soil, I would not reuse the soil. Um, 
there she is pest free I don't see any issues with her so I'm gonna try to break up her roots a little bit and then just reuse this soil she is nice and hydrated that's for sure And just break her up just a little bit. Get some of these dead leaves out. She's in a very perlite mix here. I'm not going to disturb her roots too, too much. I'm just going to kind of fluff it up a little bit just to her roots are so fine and thin. And then I'm going to go get some more potting mix. Once I use all this. Okay, let me go grab some more mint. Okay, so I have some more of my Aeroid mix. I'm gonna add a little bit of, a couple little handfuls of compost to it, mix it up. Kind of break apart any chunkiness. Ooh, making a mess per usual. I would suggest doing this outside, but uh, yeah, here I am making a mess for myself to clean up. So, just try to backfill her. And honestly, I really thought that this Hoya was gonna be really, really badly root bound, but it's not, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. I mean, like I said, I had this plant for about three years in that pot. So maybe whenever I got it, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, completely fully rooted. Maybe that's why. Not sure. But I'm going to spin this without trying to break any of her leaves and, oh my god, this is heavy, leaves and stems and do the back side. I guess whenever we're finished with this, I can go around and show you all uh, some of my potted plants that I have. But don't get too excited. It's it's nothing, it's nothing grand, but I like my house plants. I can show you what I got. I used to have a lot more house plants, um, but I traded them, got rid of them, sold them on Facebook. Okay, that is looking fairly decent. I'm just kind of press it down just a little bit, not too hard. And that is about what I'm looking for. So now I'm going to put my mouse back on because I like the way it looks. I like the way the moss adds like a little decorative touch to it even though you don't you don't have to top dress your pots I feel like that orchid mix is a really really pretty soil I like the way it looks um, whenever I'm finished with this I might go around and show you guys 
my plant collection that I have, um, I, like I said, I don't, I don't have a lot anymore since I've gotten my outside garden area. I just don't have time for a bunch of indoor plants like I used to. Um, so I have gotten rid of a lot of plants and kept the ones that I really enjoy and love. I love my, I think my favorite plants is Sagoniums. I don't know what it is about Sagoniums, but I love them. <laughs> if I, I'm trying to get as many colors of Sagoniums that I can kind of fluff it out a little bit. And I'm going to take the edges of this moss and kind of hang them over the pot just a little bit. All right. She looks grand. She's had a little update. I like her. She's pretty. So that's done. Let's move on. Let me go put her back and then I'll move on and show you around the house of my other plants. Hey, so here she is in her spot. She's in the front entryway. Um, I just have this little clipped on light that I got from Amazon. I did accidentally, whenever I put the pot down, I smushed or crushed one of her little tendrils. So that's sad, but she'll be okay. She likes this spot. She's been doing great. I am going to give her a drink of water off camera. Um, not too much, just a little bit because she has a lot of extra soil that her roots need to fill in that space. So I do not want to overwater her. And plus she just had some water. So just, just a little bit to make sure some of that soil has settled or there's no little air gaps because that bark is super thick. Um, let's go show you my plants next to my fireplace. There's my little, <laughs> there's Dougie. He's sleeping. You taking a nap? <laughs> His little tongue's hanging out. So this is one of my plants next to my fireplace. Uh, this is a multicolor Tratoscanthia. I got this also from Steve's Leaves. Uh, she's looking, she's looking a little bare right now. Uh, this was originally in one of my outside pots. I've been taking cuttings of it and sticking it into this pot. So it'll be, it'll get nice and bushy. Just when you take cuttings and you're potting them up, it, it could take a little bit for the pot to get full, but it'll get there. And then up top here, I don't know if you can see, they're hidden whenever you're standing up. But if you crouch under and look underneath, you can see them. These are lights that I also purchased from Amazon. Uh, I just stuck them up there with some heavy duty Gorilla Tape. It, they've been up there for three to four years now and they have held up just fine. Here is the timer that they're on and it just runs and plugs into the wall right here. But I love this timer. Um, if, you, if you do get one, I would definitely recommend a timer setting one because Whatever time that I turn these lights on for the first time is the time that it comes on every single day after that. And they turn off depending on how much or how long you want them set to. Like this one is a three, six and 12 hour set timer. So they come, come on and come off automatically. And over here I have my, it's a tongue, tongue twister. It's an epiprimnum pinnatum variegated. I got this uh, plant from, well, it wasn't a plant. It was a single node cutting, no leaves from Facebook Marketplace. I originally had it on a moss pole and I've just come to, I've just come to realize that I don't really enjoy my plants being on moss poles. So I've taken it off the moss pole because it's a trailer. It wants to go up and um, repotted it in this bigger pot and I'm just wrapping the trailing part around the soil ever since i did that and these nodes are touching the soil it has put off a huge leaf and with fenestrations on it so i'm super excited about it i love this plant um if you can see some of them have fenestrations but 
it's a lot smaller, a lot smaller leaves. This one is a newer leaf. So it's the white variegation is not showing up as bright as some of the older leaves. Like this one back here, this one is a bright white and a super dark green. Once this one ages a little bit, that green will turn dark and rich and that white will brighten up. This is the newest leaf. And then in these, I have my propagations in some water. Um, this one is my pink spot Sigonium. These are my variegated Sigoniums. So white and green. And then I have, this is also where I'm proper getting some of that tricolor uh, Tritoscanthia. Another pink spot. Look at those roots on these. These are ready to be potted. I just need to hurry up and find a bigger pot for that. Oh yeah. Here's some roots. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I'm going to change all this water out. This water needs to be changed. And then this is a little trio of my orchids. Um, I've had these orchids for a while. My husband has gotten them for me for holidays, birthdays, Valentine's Day, stuff like that. So I've had them for a while, but they have never bloomed for me. So I have been researching and I found this water culture for or orchids. And I just about, it's been about four days now. I've taken them out of their orchid mix and they are in water culture. <laughs> uh, so far, it seems to be doing okay. Um, I hope they don't die on me. That would be, I would be super bummed if they did die. But you can see here, the base of the orchid is not in water. It's just the tips of some of the roots that are touching the water. Um, they do, some people say you should take them out when they're, when you first introduce them to the water culture, you should take them out and let them dry for a couple of days and then put them back in the water. I'm going to have to do some more research on that and, and hopefully it turns out. Okay. Here is my bedroom and in my bedroom, I have a Manjulo pothos. It is, I got this from a single node with two leaf cutting from Facebook marketplace. I have been taking cuttings of it, water propagating it, and then sticking it back in the soil to get it super full. And I think, I think we're there. <laughs> uh, I love this pothos. It has some of the big, biggest leaves. I love the color on it. So yeah, that's my Minjulo pothos. Um, I did have a Snow Queen pothos and it wasn't my favorite. So I think I gave it away on Facebook. Um, its leaves are a little bit smaller than this. I don't know. I, lo I love the pothos that have the huge, the huge big leaves. And then over here, we have my variegated Zagonium. I have been, this one also was on a moss pole because it likes, again, to trail up. Um, I have done the same thing. I have been twisting the new growth into the soil here. And as you can see, since I've done that, all the little nodes that are touching the soil are putting off new shoots, new growth. So that's super exciting. I will have to repot this soon. Um, there are roots coming out of the bottom of this one, but that is okay. And right here we have, I've underplanted it. Ooh. My gosh, that doesn't look good. Let's put this in water. And once my pink spot Sigonium starts to root, I'm going to also stick this or stick those in this pot. This has a stand light that I got from Amazon. It's not the prettiest, it's not my favorite, but it works. It has five lights that comes off of it. And then connected to the other two lights are my Enjoy Pothos. This one, I like her, she's pretty. I love the coloring on it. I just don't like the small the small leaves that she has. Um, so I don't know, we might be keeping her, might be trading her. We will see, but she's growing good. Again, I got this from a single node cutting off of Facebook. I have propped it and chopped it and reset it to make it into this big bushy plant. Mm, she's, a little, 
actually a little bear back there, but that is okay. Let's go show you my bathroom zygonium. So here we are in my bathroom. Uh, this is my neon pink zygonium. I'm not sure if you can see the color on her. But I got this zygonium on Facebook for $5. It came with the plant and the pot. And like I said, I love zygonium, so I had to grab it. Had to, had to have it. Um, it likes this spot. It's right here on the little ledge in my bathroom, so it gets natural lighting. Um, the only thing is I do have to spin it every couple of days because, as you can see, it will start to grow into the light or into the window and so i just come in here and i just give her a spin every couple of days and she does great in this spot whenever i first got her she had signs of thrips so i put her in my bathroom to kind of keep her away from my other plants and she's just done so great here i just kind of kept her here and i i like seeing her <laughs> whenever i'm in the bathroom so she stays and she is not a trailing uh sigonium like my other my other one it's she's more low profile and stays bushy and thick on the bottom so i love that about her i wish all my sigonium stayed like that but that is just not the case okay guys so that is it for my little plant tour i hope you enjoyed i enjoy talking to you and showing you all my plants um, you know, there is one plant that I would love to add to my collection and I was this close to having it, uh, about a year ago. I bit the bullet and purchased it on Facebook marketplace. It was the Monstera Albo. I probably paid about 165, 180 for it. Um, she delivered it and it was lost in transit so i didn't get it for about two weeks and it was a single node one leaf cutting i by the time i opened it and got it it was so black and mushy there was just no saving it even though i did try i cut off all the dead mushiness and got as close to that node as i could but ultimately it just succumbed so if i could find a decent price uh, monstera elbow or a Thai constellation, I would definitely love to add it, but it might be a while because I'm still, it still stings from when I purchased that one and it died on me. So, and it was no fault to the seller. She packaged it awesome. She, you know, wrapped it up great. It was just, it was lost in transit. What can you do? And it's like, of course, the one time that I buy something that is that expensive for a plant, it gets lost like that would of course that would happen to me now i gotta go clean up this dang mess